Welcome to the VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. So after doing our budget EG, we've decided to do a budget EF. So we have kind of a new list here. The EF actually requires a few more parts than the EG does, probably because it's got older electronics, but basically it's gonna be approximately the same thing. As you can see here, we've got our list on this side are all the things we're gonna be buying from used cars. On this side are the parts we actually need to help make things happen. Hey, this is the K24 that we pulled from the yard. Uh, we got it all assembled with the transmission that we pulled from the RSX. This is the engine that we got from the CRV. Uh, if you're paying attention to the list or if you look at the list later in the article on vtechacademy.com, uh, there'll be a, like a series of things that you're going to be looking for. So like, like us, when we were piecing things together, we had to make sure that we got all the things that we're going to need, including like a starter, an alternator, your wiring harness, some other various parts. It's kind of what we had to do to piece this thing together to make it one complete assembly. Of course, if you're buying a motor elsewhere and it comes complete, then you wouldn't have to worry about that, but just make sure you get your... You get your wiring harness, your water necks, your starter, your alternator, your slave cylinder, you know, the transmission, uh, the shift linkage, shifter. Um, geez, uh, you know, this, actually, this engine was actually missing a few sensors, which we had to go and source off some other K-series um, motors that were out in the yard also. So those are just things that you want to keep in mind, but uh, we're pretty close to getting this back in. This motor cleaned up really well, so I think uh, he's going to be happy with the swap when we're done with it. The engine harness we got was actually an automatic harness and we're going to have to do some modifications. That's actually going to be a later episode. We're going to show you how to take the automatic harness, turn it into a manual harness. But we have some prep work we have to do to the car. Now the engine doesn't really fit well in here. Uh, this is a small car. Uh, you'll notice that this transmission mount kind of hangs out into the opening. The timing, timing cover is going to come right here. So it's going to completely interfere with that. Also this uh, proportioning valves in the way. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to clear off all this stuff right here and we're going to take the proportioning valve and we're going to kind of relocate it over here onto the firewall. Once that's done, uh, we're going to have to weld a bracket in here and that pretty much gets our engine bay ready for the installation of the K-Series. Well, this is stuff that, that uh, is for emissions purposes that some of it we, I don't think that we're going to actually even reuse. I think this is going to be a, a race car only, so I don't know that he's going to actually uh, register this or not. And then if he does, he's, he's a wild man. The hydraulic transmissions are operated with an electronic sensor. What's really cool about the transmission that we're going to use, which is RSX uh, base model, but also this works with the Type S as well, is that speed sensor, the VSS, will come out of it and you can reuse your cable VSS. It'll go directly in place of that. And so that means this is one part that we won't be re removing and we'll be reusing. Basically what we need to do is this is going to have to have, this is going to have to be remounted in a different position mm -hmm. so that it's not um, so that it's not it's in the, the way right there. Yeah, the header comes right here. So we want to have this routed maybe this way so it doesn't get overheated. But the big problem is you can't leave it here because this is going to now this is going to be mounted over here. Uh, the heater core tube is copper and in an attempt to keep from crushing it we're just going to cut this hose off it's not even shaped in the direction that we need it to anyways so brian's just going to cut it off in an attempt to for us to save that um it it was a f like a fatal mistake i used to make back in the day when i would just grab a wrench and just squeeze on it and try to turn it and i pull it off and realize i completely damaged my heater core so that's a yeah that's a newbie no no they're kind of kind of delicate yeah. so just split the hose off. It doesn't, it's not going to work on a K-Series anyway, so why bother? I'm getting rid of all the AC stuff. I'm doing a tuck. 
an AC tuck. Wow. Now you can't even tell it has AC now, huh? I it's in the trunk, doesn't work, but it has it. I, I think he just told us to tuck off. <laughs> so part of this uh, procedure for getting this off is uh, there's actually some springs in there that help maintain pressure in the rear braking system when you're coming off brakes so the car stays more stable. Uh, in order, uh, so when we take this bracket off right here, this black bracket, what's going to happen is this is going to try and separate. So one of the things we do is we put a clamp on there. We're going to clamp it together and that way as we take the screws out to move our bracket around, this thing doesn't try to separate. Next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be bending the brake proportioning valve over up against the firewall. While we do that, I have to be real careful not to uh, kink any of the lines because if we kink any of them, we have to replace them. Just all we want to do is flip this bracket over so that we can put it up against the firewall. So it's a clean install. So it's a clean install. Yeah. You see a lot of people that just kind of have it zip tied yeah. up to the edge and that to me doesn't look good. Uh, but uh, these uh, use safety torque bits. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, see this bit? That's what the screw is. Uh, it's actually designed not to come apart. They've actually come in here and scored the thread so that, so that it, you know kind of lock it in there. So when you take it apart, it's going to um, straighten that damage out a little bit. Um, but it's a pain in the ass. We've got our uh, bracket screwed on the other way. We can now get it up against the firewall. Uh, this might wind up removing this. Uh, just drill out a couple spot wells, take this off. Probably we can get to the firewall now because the AC evaporator is gone. So we'll probably drill a couple holes and that way we can bolt this firmly up against that. If you notice, there's no kinks in the lines. We just kind of straighten out a few where they need a straightening out and then uh, kind of a little extra bend in a straight section of this one down here and now we'll be able to attach this up against the wall and get it out of the way all right here's the fun part where we get to start shedding some metal uh, this bracket has to go it's held in by a series of spot welds now they make really cool fancy spot weld bits for taking these out but uh, we're gonna use something a little bit different these are a lot cheaper this is called a pilot point belt uh, drill pilot point drill uh, basically what happens is uh, once you have a small hole in the center, you can see these raised edges will come in and just kind of clean that spot weld right out. So it's kind of an inexpensive alternative to going out and purchasing the uh, rotor brooches or spot weld drill bits. And uh, I like them because they're long. So sometimes when you are close to something, you know, if this drill was down here close, it'd probably be interfering right here. And a lot of the spot weld drill bits are really short. So I kind of prefer using these. First thing you need to do though is you need to center punch all the spot welds. That way your drill doesn't drift off to the side. I usually use a snap punch. I don't have one with me today, so we're just going to use a good old fashioned center punch. The next thing I'm going to do is drill a little pilot hole. Not that I usually complain about cheap tools, but uh, this is a Harbor Freight die grinder. Uh, it uses a lot of air. That's fine. That doesn't bother me. But check out this cutoff wheel. It clogged up with steel. I have never had that happen before. It's smooth. It's like it was polishing it. I'm going to give the die grinder one more try with uh, a higher quality wheel and see if it doesn't uh, work a little bit better. Otherwise, in the garbage. I'm hoping it's just the wheel. The next part of uh, prepping our engine bay is the bracket. It bolts in, or not bolts in, it winds up getting welded in right about here. Now, we actually have two live locator holes. That one right there, another one right here. 
That helps us make sure we get the bracket in the right place. Now I do suggest when you're doing this to put the bolts in and test the engine to make sure everything lines up straight when you get it in there. You have to be careful that this isn't angled because it'll actually affect the width of the engine mounts. So you want it pretty much straight up and down. But use the bolts to locate it. You want to mark where you're going to weld, then come back and grind away the paint. Because once you weld it, you don't want to weld it to paint, you want to weld it to metal. Probably go ahead and paint this with some weld through primer and that way once we're done we can just simply clean this up a little bit more go buy some paint the right color and paint it up well our brackets out and that concludes this episode of VTech Academy join us next time when we start putting stuff back together <laughs>